Hi everybody, Dan Bailey here with another Fujifilm tutorial for you. Uh, today I'm going to take a look at Fujifilm's X-RAW Studio software. Uh, that's their free RAW conversion software you can download right from their site. X-RAW Studio takes a different approach than other programs like Lightroom and Photoshop. And instead of using sliders, you're actually doing conversions exactly as if you were doing them in the camera, uh, using the same tools as you'll find in the RAW processing or the RAW conversion menu item inside the X-Series cameras. And in fact, when you're using X-RAW Studio, you are using the camera to do the conversion. That's how it works. You actually attach your camera to the computer with a USB cable, and you're using the camera's internal processing chip and software to do the actual conversions, which you then see on the screen. So X-RAW Studio allows you to see the conversions as you're doing them, unlike in the camera, where you can only see the con effects of your conversion choices and your settings when you've actually, when you're done and when you've hit the OK button. With X-RAW Studio, you can make your adjustments on the screen and see them reflected in, in almost real time. So let's fire up the program and see how it works. The first thing I'm going to do is connect the camera. So I've got my X-T3 here, uh, and if I turn it to the side and open the, the door with all of the connection ports, uh, I can connect a USB cable. It's got a USB-C connector, so I've actually got a USB cable running for my computer with uh, the USB-C adapter. And so if I plug that into the camera, then I'm all set to go, and it's all ready to hook up. And now I can actually just set the camera aside, so I'll just set it off to the corner of my desk uh, and make sure you turn it on first. So I've got my folder of images here, uh, and these are just a few pictures I've pulled out uh, for this lesson. These are X-T3 photos, uh, but you'll see that three of them are grayed out, and that's because those were shot, these two were shot with the X-T2, and if you look down here in the corner, the right-hand corner, you'll see uh, this little message blinking, X-T2 version 4.10. And so that tells you what camera and firmware version was used to create that photo. So I can't actually adjust these X-T2 photos with my X-T3 hooked up to the computer. Uh, I would have to hook the X-T2 up. It's actually pretty easy. You can plug and play with no problem. You can, you can just pick up the X-T2, unplug and replug that in without having to quit the software, and it'll recognize that. So I've actually kept the program open for a couple of days and swap cameras back and forth, and I hadn't had any issues uh, of crashing or anything. So that's, that's convenient anyway. Uh, this image over here was created with the X100V, and again, you can see that here, X100V version firmware 1.0. So that's kind of the first thing, is that you can only use the camera that you created the image to make the conversion. And so I've actually had some people ask me, can I, uh, if my camera doesn't have Say my camera doesn't have classic Chrome film simulation, um, but I do the conversion in X-RAW Studio, can I add that later? And the answer is no. If the image was created with a camera that doesn't have a specific feature, or film simulation, or a creative setting, uh, such as color chrome effect, or the clarity setting that's found on the X100V and the X-T4 and the X-Pro3, then you can't apply that to an older image. So let's start with this image here. Uh, and sometimes it takes a little bit of time to load. Uh, so we'll start with this image here, and I'll just give you a rundown. Uh, the, over here on the left, we can pull up a histogram, uh, and then we have all of the image data, all of the metadata, uh, camera, lens, serial number, uh, type of image, bit depth, color, space, shutter speed, aperture, all the exposure settings, uh, and then I have all of the relevant uh, settings that were used to create this. So for this image, I used Velvia Film Simulation with auto white balance and a shadow tone adjustment of minus one. But what if I want to make some adjustments and get a different look for this image or just solve a few exposure problems and just tweak things slightly? Well, that's where this right hand tool panel comes in handy. And this is where you do the conversion. And so you'll notice that all of these are identical to the settings you find in the image quality menu in your camera and also in the in-camera raw conversion menu. So image size, image quality, push-pull processing, uh, film simulation, uh, black and white adjustment, effects, grain, color chrome, white balance, white shift, highlight shadow, tone, color, sharpness, noise reduction, lens modulation, opt optimizer, color space, and rotate. So again, all of those settings are identical to what you'll find in the camera's raw conversion menu. So let's just start by making some adjustments, and I'll just show you what these effects do, uh, what these settings can do. 
So maybe you'll tell yourself, oh, I'd like to open up some of those shadows. Uh, so maybe I can go to a shadow tone, maybe shadow tone minus two. And so you can see right on the screen how those open up. And obviously that there's a limited amount of adjustments you can do, uh, but in a in the sense that makes it easy because you don't have to you don't have so much middle ground and so much leeway to kind of go back and forth. Well, is this enough? Is this enough? Should I slide more? Should I pull it back more? Uh, just like the cameras, you get what you get. Uh, and if I do need some more exposure, maybe I can adjust the push pull processing. Let's let's go one stop up and see how that looks. So that certainly rescued my foreground here. Uh, maybe maybe I need to rescue some of the, the highlights so I can go highlight tone minus two. And that rescues some of the sky in here. Obviously it's not going to rescue everything because these are extremely bright tones uh, from the setting sun. And no matter what, these tones are pretty much lost. Uh, I don't think there's any way you could adjust, you could rescue all of that. Uh, but I've, at any rate, I've preserved a little bit of those tones. Uh, but what if we used a different film simulation? What if I chose, let's see, instead of Velvia, what if I chose Classic Chrome? So that definitely makes a change. Let's see what Pro Neg Standard looks like. That's one of the, the lower contrast and saturation film simulations, and so that uh, will rescue even more of these tones in here with even lower contrast. Pro Neg Standard, he's at Eterna. So that, that really opens up, uh, that makes a big difference. And if your goal was to open up the shadows, uh, this is the approach you might take. Uh, maybe we can pull back even more. We could do maybe plus two minus color. Maybe we can pull back even more. Let's do a minus two on the color adjustment. Uh, pretty subtle. Let's see what minus four does. So again, it's pretty subtle. So Eterna at minus two highlight, minus two shadow, and minus four color. Uh, what if we go monochrome? Let's do monochrome with a G filter, with a green filter. Uh, so that has a much different look. We could try the red filter. You can see that makes a big difference in the way the image looks between the green and red filter. Uh, yellow filter. Uh, I'll stick with the red filter. I like that one the best. Uh, we could also adjust our uh, the black and white color adjustment. We can go to the warm side. Let's do a plus seven adjustment on the warm side. So you give it that kind of sepia look, this slight warm brownish look. Or we can go back to, uh, let's go minus eight on the cool side. So as you can see, there's a lot of leeway and a lot of adjustments that allow you to craft an image uh, that to your liking, that matches your own creative ideas or whatever idea you're going for at the time. So as you can see, even though you don't have traditional sliders like you have in Photoshop and Lightroom or Luminar, you still have a lot of adjustments that can vary, that can widely vary the look of your image. Uh, and it can allow you to craft a unique looking photograph that matches your own creative ideas that you're going for in the moment. So when you've got all the adjustments set and you, if you like what you see on the screen, then you click the convert button and it's going to send, it's going to create create the conversion and store a copy and, and store your, your exported JPEG right in the same folder. And so you have that for reference. So let's go to the next image. Uh, and by the way, I'm running this on my 10-year-old Mac Pro. So if you have a newer, faster computer, which pretty much everyone on the planet does, uh, then you'll probably get slightly better performance, especially when choosing between images. Uh, mine's a little bit slow doing that and also re rendering the files. Uh, I've got my system loaded up, maxed out with RAM, so it's still hanging on, but uh, a newer, faster computer would certainly give you better performance with XRAW Studio. Uh, so here's a photo uh, that I especially like, and this is where the fun really begins because I don't really have any contrast issues, no exposure problems, so then it becomes a matter of creativity. Uh, and this was shot uh, with, with the Acros Film simulation, red filter, with the black and white adjustment set on uh, plus seven on the warm side, and a minus one shadow tone. And there's a lot of variation we could do here. Uh, let's see what classic chrome looks like. And maybe let's pull the color back to minus four. 
and shadow tone plus three. You know, that may or may not be what you're going for, but you can see the, the amount of variation that's possible. Uh, let's look at uh, Velvia film simulation. So we can boost those colors even more. Let's take this up to plus two on the color. And so now we've got an incredibly rich, vibrant photo. Uh, let's look at, at uh, monochrome. And let's go to the cool side. And maybe let's boost these shadows even more. So yeah, three different, three or four different looks uh, within a matter of a minute or two. Uh, and so that's the kind of creativity that XRAW Studio offers. And so, you know, a as with any kind of processing, uh, whether I'm using Photoshop or Luminar or XRAW Studio, it's often just a matter of what appeals to me in the moment. What I'll make an adjustment and see what it does, and if I like it, I'll run with it. And if I don't like it, I'll pull it back and try something else. So let's, let's uh, undo whatever we just did. Uh, I think it was our shadow tone. We can undo it again. And now we're back to, uh, we're back to that. Uh, we could try one more thing. We could just see how Provia looks. Let's see how straight Provia looks with no adjustments. So yeah, totally different than what my original image was. Uh, but again, it's it's whatever you're going for, whether you're solving problems or whether you're just going for a different creative look. And then, of course, when you're ready, just hit the conversion button and it'll send copy of that file right into the same folder and which will pull it right back in XRAW Studio. So here's an image that was shot with the X100V. And even though I can't adjust it, uh, it was also a JPEG, so I can't make any adjustments over here. I can still see the metadata and the camera information. So film simulation classic neg, which the X-T3 doesn't have, shadow tone minus two, uh, color chrome effect blue on, but I actually have my X100V right here. So let's just plug and just swap them out here. I'll unplug the X-T2 or unplug my X-T3 rather and plug the X100V, turn it on. And, and now you'll see up in the corner here, it says Fujifilm X100V and up here as well. So it knows that I've now switched the camera. And so now we'll go back to this image uh, in the SX Raw Studio folder I had made, and we can now adjust this image. You see these parameters are all ready to adjust. Uh, and so we can hit the AB picture here, or the AB icon, and now we can uh, adjust that, and you can see the changes over here while this original image is preserved. So we'll do Velvia with plus two shadow tone. So now we have two very distinctly different looks uh, when all we did was just make a couple of simple adjustments over here. And of course we can continue to play around with that. Let's do monochrome. Let's do monochrome red. Uh, let's add a, let's add a strong grain effect. And we will go, uh, monochrome or we'll go, to, uh, this monochromatic color. Oh, and now see the extra, the, the X100V actually has, instead of just warm and cool, it now has this entire white balance style grid where you can adjust uh, the, the hues of your black and white image any way you want. So there, we're gonna do that. So yeah, again, a few mouse clicks of just a couple of minutes. Uh, we've played around with this image and gotten a couple of really different looks. So, and that's kind of cool. I'm gonna hit convert here. There we go. And of course, when we're in this main window here, uh, we can zoom to 100% by hitting either the, the, the percent value here or just hitting this one by button and that'll bring us to 100%. So now we can see, oh, you can see a little bit of grain that's added. Uh, the grain is cool in the, the X series because it's not, you know, when you look at the, the full image, you don't, it's not very noticeable, but if you zoom in, uh, you can see the additional texture that, that it's added. And it's actually pretty cool. It's it's a neat look. I mean, it's personal preference, obviously. So zoom back out. So zoom in here with the one by, zoom out there. And this selection over here allows you to either zoom or move the image when you're zoomed to 100%. So hit the one by, you can move around with the hand. Uh, if I select the plus here 
anytime I tap the image with the mouse, then I zoom in even more. Or if I switch that, I can zoom out. And then we can zoom out to 100%. So that's my look at XRAW Studio. It's actually a pretty cool program. And even though it doesn't have quite the full functionality uh, and the depth that a program like Photoshop or Lightroom or even Luminar has, uh, it definitely has its own vibe. And it allows you to do things that those programs don't allow you to do, which is preserve and adjust uh, to the exacting parameters uh, that your X-Series camera has. So you can adjust your image using those exact color profiles of the Fuji Film Simulations, which a lot of us love. Uh, and you can use some of the other controls like highlight, shadow tone, color chrome effect, uh, the clarity setting on the newer cameras. So yeah, it's a different kind of program, uh, but it does have its own place. And it, it's the kind of thing that you would use in conjunction uh, with Photoshop or Lightroom. It's not gonna be your do everything first choice processing program, but it does definitely fill a void those other ones don't have. And so that's the cool thing about it. And of course, it's a free download, so you can get the program right on Fujifilm's site. Uh, and as I said, I'm running mine on a 10-year-old Mac, and it runs just fine. So if you have a new computer, which most everyone does, it's going to probably zip along even faster than I have. So I hope you found this to be a helpful tutorial, uh, and I'm glad to be able to do this for you guys. So appreciate if you leave any comments or feedback in, in the comment section. Uh, and be sure and subscribe to my channel. And if you haven't seen my best-selling ebook, X-Series Unlimited, you'll definitely want to check that out. It's a 350-plus page manual. It'll tell you everything you need to know in order to get the best results, the best performance, and the most creativity from your Fuji camera. So that's all for now. Thanks again for watching, uh, and have fun with your cameras out there, and we'll see you next time.